so this is a day in the life of me. We're waking up in the morning while I'm waking up. Langston is obviously still asleep. Um, time to wash my face. Try and get this day started. I look like hell in the morning, but I mean, who doesn't? So that's welcome to the 40s. And here's Nala. I usually just set out my clothes out here because Langston's still asleep so I set my clothes out the night before and I have a meeting this morning so I have a little dress. Nala wants petted obviously. She's always waiting. I just oil my cuticles and put on some lotion, get ready for the day, get dressed, put my shoes on. So today I have a meeting with a potential art client who wants to kind of take a tour of my artwork. And I've set up my art throughout the house for that. I also have a hair client. And uh, Langston has a little three-hour program that he has to go to this morning for ABA therapy for learning. And yeah, Franklin's got football practice, weights, and conditioning, and just miscellaneous other stuff that I've got to do. These are hard to put on with one hand because these shoes, honestly, I shouldn't be holding a camera in one hand and trying to put on my shoes, but I am because you guys asked for this video. That's why. <laughs> so anyway, and um, shoes are on. I'm ready for the day. The first thing I do after getting dressed is clean because it's always super messy. Just at the end of the day, I don't bother to clean up. So I always sweep the whole floor and vacuum. I mean, Langston plays all the way up to bedtime. So I always clean in the morning, just make sure the floor is swept really, really well. And Nala, of course, has to be right in the middle of everything per usual. <laughs> and this is my little closet with all my like cleaning supplies and hair supplies. Oh, there's Franklin. He just got out of the shower. So yeah, I open the blinds, open the curtains. I actually put Velcro on the sides of my curtains so that they stay closed because otherwise Langston will have them wide open at night when it's dark. So I always um, put them kind of Velcro together. And then in the morning, I just open up the curtains and tie them in a knot. And this is my art. So yeah, you can kind of see this is a little sculpture that's framed and a printmaking piece, another printmaking piece and a painting, a little self-portrait in the corner. So I'll give you a little mini art tour. This is how I set it up for showing the client today. So yeah, that's my little workstation and Langston's table and this is what I film with my little mini tripod <laughs> um but I have a piece of velcro on the mirror so that I can do my hair tutorials so I just velcro my phone to the mirror and yeah I'm just kind of tying up my faux locks and then I need to do my makeup I look so tired in the morning Someone needs to give me, oh, and I have this like red dot on the tip of my nose. It's super irritating. So I always have to cover that up. It's just this tiny little red dot. I don't even know what it came from. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you can see I'm irritated too because <laughs> I've got bags under my eyes and no makeup on. So I use a Neutrogena foundation. I actually love Rihanna's Fenty foundation, but I just can't afford it. I only bought one bottle of that and then I couldn't buy any more. So this is just from the drugstore. I actually used two different colors because this time of the year, it's just so weird to get a color match because you're getting more sun or less sun and get pale or tan depending on the day. So I just put on those two colors. I've also got some dark patches on the sides of my neck from I think it was when I was pregnant with Langston I kind of got some little dark patches on the side so I usually put some foundation over that too and yeah just brush it on and um, 
I try and get it really nicely done, smoothly done under my eyes. But if somebody has like a magic cure for bags under your eyes, because I'm never getting the right amount of sleep, or I'm always sleeping like restless or waking up in the middle of the night because I have to sleep with Langston. So let me know if you have some kind of like a magic product to put under your eyes because I have that problem every morning. It's so annoying. But And guess who needs to use the bathroom again? So I'm out. That's all I got to do is my foundation. This is Franklin's breakfast currently. And that's my breakfast. <laughs> Um, I'm drinking my breakfast when I'm really tired and I like to eat a lot of food first thing in the morning. This is an energy drink from pure people United reaching everyone. And it's super good. It has lots of vitamins and stuff in it. So it's not just an energy drink. It's also like B12 and just kind of good for different system functions. So that's how much sleep I got. Seven hours, seven and a half hours with three times awake, eight times restless. <laughs> And I've gotten 454 steps by, yeah, like not even doing anything. I guess vacuuming maybe was that, sleeping. So I use this nude palette. Now I get to actually do my my makeup, finish it since Franklin's out of the bathroom. I use kind of like the dark brown just for my eyebrows with a brush. I'm very simple when it comes to makeup. Like I literally have foundation. I have this nude palette. I use a little bit of mascara. So I use, I'm use i using like a darker color around the outside and then just a lighter color to kind of blend it. And you can see it gives more definition to my eyes. It's just super quick. I like things that are really quick because, you know, I'm a mom. So I need, I have things to do and people to take care of. <laughs> Use a little bit of face powder just to try and smooth everything together. And then that stupid red spot on my nose. So I got to get that and any other little red spots with my little blemish stick. And then I am going to do um, my lips. So this is another just, I think this is a NYX brand lip liner. When you get into your 40s, your lips, like the lining, the line around your lips is kind of uneven. So you kind of need a little bit of a lip liner. So that's that. Or maybe that was Maybelline. This is Urban Decay Fussy. Not Fussy. Um, Backtalk. Backtalk. So this is Backtalk. I have Fenty Beauty Fussy lip gloss. But this is, so this is like a Backtalk color in Urban Decay Matte Lipstick. And then just a little touch of mascara on my under lashes. I have an amazing lash titian who does my upper lashes once in a while. So I got those done recently since I'm gonna be doing a documentary interview. So yeah, that's the little mascara. And then I have just a Revlon dark brown eyeliner. Just kind of looks natural. Brown eyeliner I hear is good for green eyes. I mean, I don't know. I don't watch makeup tutorials. So <laughs> this is just about all I do. A little teeny bit of blush or bronze or whatever. It's kind of almost a bronze color, but... Now I'm ready for the day. I'm done with my makeup. Put on a little bit of Versace perfume and I'm out the door. Oh, well, actually I'm back in because I am bathing Langston and Franklin apparently didn't know that my phone was videotaping. <laughs> so that was him putting his contacts in. Now I've got to get Langston ready for his school program, his little therapy. He's got his backpack on. We're ready to get out the door. So we're off. He is not happy about this morning either. Mondays are a hard time for him. So I'm taking my little energy drink with me in the car. And this is the radio. <laughs> 
So I listen to iHeartRadio sometimes when I'm driving in the morning. So we're headed off down the road and at a stoplight. I'm like, oh, I my lips felt a little dry, so I'm going to use some of Rihanna's um, Fussy and Fenty Beauty. And yeah, we're just headed to Langston's little program. And here we are. He's He's chilled out. He's not stressing. He's not super happy about Monday. <laughs> but he's not stressing too much. And now I am headed back home to hopefully show my art to this client. And then I get home and I see this. I mean, come on, Franklin. Like, really? Look at all that stuff. Try to clean the bathroom. That literally was all Franklin stuff in like around the sink, you know, anyways, people say girls are bad, but so I clean the bathroom just in case my potential client needs to use the bathroom while they're here. And then I realized that my towel really sucks. I need new hand towels, but I don't have time for that right now. And I was just a little distracted by the fact that my legs were so pale and just looking kind of gross in the dress. So I just add a little touch of the um, leg makeup stuff. It's kind of like a leg makeup smoother. I just actually add some to lotion so it goes a lot further that way. And then it's just kind of like a little bit of an instant sun on your legs. So it's not so pasty, pale, because I need some sun on my legs. And I will get some later today, but... At this point, they were not looking cute, so I had to add that. And then I get a call that my client is canceling, so I have to change outfits. So yeah, I don't want to wear a dress all day if nobody's coming to see my art. So this is a t-shirt that I actually had the kids sign. My sister and my son signed the back of it when the Netflix documentary came out, so it's my personal keepsake. But I decided that I'm going to finally plant these little rescue plants that I got since it's the end of the season for selling plants. I kind of found some plants that weren't looking super great and rescued them. <laughs> so I'm going to finally put them in pots and I'm just getting some of my bigger pots and I've planted a couple tomato plants, some cilantro and lavender, some chives and basil. And then I'm grabbing Langston's pool and cleaning it out and picking up the yard stuff. So those plants are happy in the sunshine. So now is the time of day when I've switched gears because I was going to be showing my art to a potential buyer, but instead they canceled. So um, I am going to do my nails because obviously they've been looking crazy all morning um so yeah i planted the flowers first because i want to get dirt under my new nails so i'm going to do these a friend of mine sent these little bejeweled nails which look cute so i'm going to do those and about this time of day i start getting a little bit hungry so i'm going to eat a couple apple slices and do my nails So the first step in doing nails is to take off my old ones, which actually are, you know, like I've cut them because I always have to, I always end up doing something that is just, you know, too intense for nails. So they usually break. So I just take one of the nails that is a size that I'm not going to be able to wear on any of my fingers and just use it to get um, those other nails off. Kind of put them in a pile. And then after I get the nails off, I'm going to kind of trim and file my natural nails and then make sure that the tips are filed really well so that 
I mean like the surface is filed really well because if you don't do that you don't get a good adhesion with the glue so yeah today is different um, just because well but every day is different for me honestly <laughs> I say today is different because I had to change gears for what I was expecting to do. And I do not like changing from my plan because I feel like then I get inefficient because I kind of am scatterbrained about what to fill that time with um, because there are a million things that need to get done every day. <clears throat> you guys want to make sure that you keep all your nails in a pile because otherwise they go, like if they go flying across the room. So those are those nails are all off um, that hand so anyway yeah every day for me is different and so when people are like do a day in the life of video I had a hard time decide I was like maybe I should plan out a day that would be interesting for people to watch <laughs> and then I was like you know what I'll just do a regular old day because every day is super different because I do a lot of different things throughout the day. But what I try and fill this morning time with is either something for self-care, like I'm doing my nails right now, or something that is hard to do with Langston Home. So like showing art to a collector is hard to do with him being home. Um, but now that I'm not even doing that today, it's kind of like, okay, what else do I need to do that kind of ties up my hands where I, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm hands free for only this amount of time. So like if, I've, if I'm doing my nails when he's home, then, and he needs something right when the, when I'm trying to glue a nail on, that's kind of tough. So I usually try and do it at a time when he's either gone or occupied. Um, I also fill this space oftentimes with my creative process. So I like to create art <clears throat> during this time as well, which I'm actually in the middle of um, getting papers over here ready for a collage. So on the other side of the table is a canvas and a lot of, a lot of cut paper. <laughs> This is, is oil, by the way, so that's for the end of the process of the nails, but yeah, so my table's always full of miscellaneous things and kind of a hot day today. I don't know if it's just because I was out in the sun planting those flowers or what, but I'm already feeling like I should turn on the AC which we don't actually have central AC, but I have just a little teeny window unit. But I feel like if I turn it on right now, it's gonna be loud, because it's kind of obnoxious sounding. And then I can't talk for filming. So, anyway, so what else? I'm thinking about the presidential debate, the Democratic debate. And don't hate me, but Kamala Harris was my top pick when people announced that they are running, just for several reasons. I know a lot of people are critical of her work as a prosecuting attorney, and, you know, I understand that. But I also think that she has, you know, as a president, she understands that role, and that she has the right policies in place as well as the right demeanor and overall just presidential qualities to do that job really well. I just feel like she's really what we need right now to unify the country and move us forward towards the next chapter. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, so I was already kind of rooting for her. <laughs> And then I was super excited to watch her performance and she did just 
a great job on stage as I expected she would so I didn't have much but I did donate five dollars to her campaign <laughs> you know it's like kind of you know it seems kind of stupid because what could five dollars really do but I do know that with collective action like you can do a lot with a hundred people contributing five dollars for example and Sometimes it's just the total number of people that contribute to a campaign that that speaks to the grassroots level of, of that candidate. So, I mean, in the first round, I really felt like Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker were my top two. Um, but in the second round, I really liked... Kamala Harris, um, I'm not a fan of Joe Biden, just not. I do hope, I mean, I will vote for him over Trump, but I feel like he's just not going to energize the vote in the same way that Kamala can. By the way, like, everybody keeps mispronouncing her name, which at first I didn't know how to pronounce it, so I thought it was Kamala. But it's not, so, you know, you just kind of, like, learn from looking it up. And she was like, it's like comma with the la. <laughs> I was like, well, that's easy. So, comma. But, anyway. Um, yeah, so it was kind of interesting just to watch those debates. I just really feel like we need somebody other than an old white male in that position right now. Not just for optics but also just for perspective and overall what they can bring to the table um, for the country because it does matter who is in that role. I mean, the same people or the same policies but different faces do make like a different statement. So, I don't know. I did think it was kind of interesting that all the candidates were trying to be so far left, like there wasn't really anybody super centrist except maybe Biden. Um, so, but as far as appealing to my vote, I just like Kamala and honestly, I just want to see her debate Trump. <laughs> Cause I think that would be kind of interesting. Not just interesting, but I think she'd win that debate, and that would be amazing to kind of have somebody take the stage and be able to handle that opportunity really well. But like I said, I really, I really do also like Cory Booker and Elizabeth Warren. I think Elizabeth Warren, it's just unfortunate that people continue to bring up the DNA test. I mean, who really cares? Like... All kind of Americans take a DNA test. So, if she want to take a DNA test, she can take a DNA test. And if she wants to honor, you know, her roots all the way back, even if it's a small percentage, and that's what she's been told, then, you know, like, that's her personal identity. I just don't understand how... People get so caught up on personal stuff, trivial stuff, and just can't see past that. So, but I don't have faith that America can't see past that kind of stuff because obviously they can't see past that stuff with me. And they don't really care, you know, a lot of people don't care about substance. They care about all these little nitpicky things that they overhype. So, speaking of Kamala, though, she does have a few things that she also has to overcome in that regard because I've seen a lot of uh, black women in particular kind of dragging her for, and men, like not really being black because she has a white husband, not really being black because her dad is Jamaican and therefore doesn't understand, you know, wasn't formerly 
uh, it doesn't have ties to American chattel slavery, so therefore she doesn't really she isn't really tied to that struggle. But I mean, come on, that kind of stuff is just it irritates me and frustrates me because so many little petty issues get in the way of people fighting for great, the greater cause and when there's somebody who really could unite the country but we're going to worry about like their DNA tests or they have a white husband or whatever it is it's like come on get over that stuff because you know everybody's going to have something that, they, that you disagree with but you got to kind of like put it in perspective is that thing a, a big deal or is that thing just a small small time issue that you can overlook and i think when it comes to personal issues especially identity issues it's small time it shouldn't be overhyped or overly exploited either way like yeah it'd be cool to have the first female president just because it'd be her and It'd be different. We'd have a first guy in office. And yeah, it'd be cool to have the first LGBT president with Pete Buttigieg. I think that's how you say his name. Speaking of which, I didn't learn how to say that name, so. <laughs> if anybody can't pronounce Kamala, I guess I can forgive them. Because I, I don't know if I can pronounce Buttigieg right. I think that is a little bit harder. But anyway, yeah, so Pete, they're just like, you know, that would be cool, but let's not vote for cool points because let's actually look at qualifications and Kamala has done a really professional job in her position. Currently, she's got a great track record. She's got the chops for just everything. So... Look at that and, you know, same with Elizabeth Warren and same with Cory Booker. Like, they could all do the job well, but I think Elizabeth Warren and Kamala are honestly, like, my two front runners. just, not just because they're women or not just because Kamala's a black woman or whatever. It's just, I like them as candidates. And I wish that people could kind of see the person as a candidate overall with all they have to offer and not just like, oh, they'd be a first of X, Y, Z, you know, and that would be cool to hear about in the news every day. This is not Big Brother. This is not a reality TV show. This is the future of our democracy in our country and this will affect people's lives like people will live and die because of this decision literally with health care with um, immigration so you know this is not stuff to play with so at this very moment because I've done so much filing and trimming I also need to change my tablecloth today, so, you know, it's time to, time to wash it, so I'm just gonna kind of fold it up, because that is gross to just have all that stuff, you know, out. I can work on a clean surface. I don't actually wash my nails after I file them. I wash them when I'm all done with my nails, like I wash my hands, but right after I file, like you want to have really good adhesion for these um, press-on nails or glue-on nails. I call them glue-on. I mean, a lot of people call them press-on, which, you know, they sometimes they come with, yeah, see, they come with these little these little strips they actually come with a file too but obviously I have my own bigger file <laughs> but yeah they come with these little strips like that 
that are supposed to stick to your fingers, but yeah, that never works for me. So they also come with this little thing that you can push up, but I almost always just file away my cuticles. I probably should use this to like push them up a little bit. Um, yeah, I usually just file them down, kind of backward filing. But yeah, so you can use this little thing. Seriously though, when it comes to politics, there's so much at stake and I learned a lot about politics even just growing up. My sperm donor, aka my biological father, was a county commissioner. So when I was really a little kid, I was painting campaign signs by hand. I was utilized for my art talent all the way back then. <laughs> so hand painting big, like we painted big sheets of plywood, like the eight foot sheets of plywood. Hand painted Larry Dolezal for county commissioner. And funny enough, like he was a Democrat the first couple times that he ran, but then like the last time that he ran, he switched parties because they became so like fanatically um, religious and pro-life. I don't know how he reconciled that. Like I don't know how that all worked out because they always were fanatical and religious, but somehow he switched from Democrat to Republican for the pro-life issue because they felt like it was wrong to be a Democrat. So, you know, around the time that they adopted, switched, and then he lost that election and never has been in politics since. So, yeah, I grew up with campaigning and that whole process and what did we do? We did like ice cream socials and just, I don't know, really old school stuff for that. And then I actually was the campaign manager for a House of Representatives candidate for her first bid for office. And she's in the house um, in Idaho. So Paulette Jordan, she's an amazing, super qualified candidate. I really think she has presidential potential as well. So I hope she makes it that big. I know it's hard because that state, we had, we raised more for her campaign financially than any other campaign in the entire state. And it was just a house race. So that's more, you know, like that's a, you don't have to campaign statewide for that, but it was, um, we had to raise a lot of money to overcome that 75% Republican pushback. And we got a lot of bipartisan support because she was super strong on education and, you know, pro-family type of stuff and just a lot of values like pro-agriculture. And she's, uh, she's a formal tribal council woman, but because she was native and Democrat and young and a woman, that was a tough campaign. And I'm really proud of her for making it all the way into the house. And then she ran for governor. And I think she got close to almost 40% of the vote statewide, which is, I mean, come on, that's incredible with the odds that were that are stacked against so many aspects of her candidacy in that state. So I know that like if she was in another state, I feel like she would have already been in the Senate or one governor or whatever, but um, I hope it happens in the future. She's definitely super amazing. So yeah, for managing that campaign, it was a lot of fundraising and door-to-door -door stuff, long hours. My poor kids and her poor kids, I mean, all our kids were just, I guess, you know, they survived. They were 
they were cool about it, but those hours are long. So anybody who's in politics out campaigning, that stuff takes a toll on the family and the emotions and just everything because you're just out all day and into, I mean, most days we didn't get done till midnight. So, it's late. Anyway, so it kind of, I guess, makes me more empathetic and just more understanding about the whole political process. When I was president of the NAACP, one of our initiatives for the political action committee was to get more uh, black candidates elected for office locally, just with, at the municipal level, because we're having problems with discrimination in schools and just a lot of um, multi-level problems with economic uh, discrepancies, discrepancies and inequities and so on and so forth. So, so when you get your nails all the way, kind of filed down to where it's super smooth, then you're ready to put these um, these new nails on. So yeah, so we ran, and then I got taken out. I mean, I really was only president for five months. So that's crazy that in five months' time, we actually saw a huge increase, like from 30 members to... Um, 300 and some members, and then also from zero active committees to eight active committees. And really, if you have zero active committees and a deficit in your bank account, like you owe more money than you have, um, yeah, you can lose your charter as a local NAACP organization. So that was really the purpose of my nomination. I, w I didn't actually apply to be the NAACP president, which a lot of people may not know that. I was actually nominated, so my name was put on the ballot by um, one of the officers because during, during the actual meeting when people were allowed to you know, challenge the incumbent, I was not present because I had just become chair of, or not chair because we had no announced no, chair, but like, um, I had just become elected to the Police Accountability Commission, the Police Ombudsman Commission, so our very first meeting happened to be on that Monday when the you know, like you had to submit your paperwork and I had always said I could definitely take on one of those positions with my teaching load at Eastern Washington University which was actually a full-time teaching load even though I was only getting paid on a part-time salary <laughs> I never had a full-time um, tenure track position with benefits which is why it was easy for them to just not renew my contract when all of, when you know the media stuff happened because then they could just conveniently um, cut me off the payroll for PR reasons but you know anyway there's always so much more to every story than than people know I put this one on a little crooked so I'm just kind of trimming it to make it straight <laughs> shaping it um so yeah back to that whole election that was just an interesting time and I didn't actually even know that my name because I said you know I can take on one unpaid position but I don't think I can take on two unpaid positions because the police ombudsman commission for police accountability was unpaid and the um, presidency of the NAACP on a local level is also unpaid. So I said, you know, I can't do both of those positions well um, and unpaid. So I just 
didn't plan on running for the NAACP presidency at all. However, the next day at work, at the office at Eastern Washington University, one of my coworkers was like, oh, I see that you're running for NAACP president because I was at the meeting and your name is on the ballot. And I was like, oh, well, um, who else is running? And it turned out that nobody else was running against um, the incumbent. And so, you know, I just kind of, in that moment, I just decided, well, the people do deserve a choice between two people instead of just being forced to have the same leadership. And I did know that the branch was in danger of losing its charter under that leadership, even though, um, you know, that individual had all good intentions and I have nothing against him. It just was not, you know, like a, an effective um, NWCP because he was not really catalyzing the membership, like getting people, young people in particular, involved. So, you know, I just decided like, okay, well, people deserve a choice. And I didn't really think too much of it other than that because I also did, I had had a, a conversation with a couple of the officers, the secretary and the treasurer, in particular, and I and they had said, you know, would you consider running because, like, we really need you to run, and, and I said, yeah, I'll definitely consider running, um, but that was before I also was approached and asked to run for the Office of Police Ombudsman Commission, and that again, I didn't, you know, at the time I was like, well, I already said I could, I would consider the NAACP presidency, so I thought, well, I'm probably not going to be elected to police accountability. I mean, if anybody's been paying attention to my my views, <laughs> I doubt that the mayor in the city is going to want me as a super pro-black leader, um, you know, on the uh, for police accountability. So I was like, they're just going to pick somebody more moderate. But I think in all honesty, they just hadn't paid attention to what I really stood for. So... Um, I got selected for that position, and again, it was um, people with the Don't Shoot movement and Peace, um, Peace and Justice Action League, and I was it was like three people asked me, and I'm kind of like a believer in like the magic of threes, so I was like, okay, I'll run for that, and then I won, and then I thought, well, I did promise the treasurer and secretary that I would consider running if nobody else was going to run against the incumbent for the NAACP presidency. So I didn't feel like it was fair to tell them like, no, you know, I'm not going to do that. I thought, all right, I talked to my kids. I actually took them to Red Robin and I said, look, I've been nominated for uh, this police accountability commission that's going to take a lot of time away from home and because I'm going to do that job right, I'm going to invest that time that's needed. And then I said, you know, my name is on the ballot for the NAACP presidency. So I have a choice. I can take, I can say no, um, or I can leave it on the ballot. And it was a long conversation because um, and something that's been really hurtful is that people accuse me of faking hate crimes, which is just completely absurd. Like, who would ever do that, especially when you have kids? And plus, a lot of the instances, um, first of all, you don't even fake a hate crime. Like, if something happens, the, pers the person that it happened to does not actually decide if it's a hate crime. Um the police decide if it's a hate crime and you know kind of everybody who's who is becomes aware of whatever the situation was so it's not like i ever called anything a hate crime just arbitrarily but that was part of that conversation was you know franklin in particular he's like mom you know how it was in idaho when you were 
directing the Human Rights Education Institute, and we got, um, you know, we had all those situations where you get phone calls in the middle of the night, and um, we found a noose, you know, outside by the garden, hanging from the rafters of the carport, and like that was scary, and like if you take this position, you know, we're we're risking something too. And I said, I know, that's why I'm I'm having this conversation with you. You know, but at the same time, I want you to think about this the state of affairs. And right then it was it was um like the Black Lives Matter movement had just kind of kicked off and so uh, I mean just had had become well known. Um and there was nothing happening for Black Lives Matter in Spokane other than me working with the Black Student Union at Eastern Washington University to do like campus-wide rallies and marches and then also doing some of those same things in Spokane in the city. And there was one guy who um, helped create like these cool LED uh, signs like lighted signs that we held at nighttime over top of the interstate that said Black Lives Matter and there's just different stuff that we were doing locally to support that but the actual NAACP wasn't doing anything to support that um, and I felt like you know it should should be behind that movement um, but it was a long conversation. At the end of it, you know, it was decided that I would go ahead and leave my name on the on the ballot and let people choose. And I won by like a two thirds majority. I mean, it was not close. It was a pretty big landslide. And I then became the president of the NAACP. And shortly after I was elected. Mike Brown was murdered in Ferguson, and the current NAACP president still had his term, like through December 31st. So this was in November, I think it was around, um, around Thanksgiving in November that year, 2014. And <clears throat> I remember just feeling like you know, something had to happen in Spokane. Like, we needed to participate in that moment, and there needed to be an opportunity for people to show up and uh, express how they felt. So I had just been elected to the Police Ombudsman Commission and just barely had been elected to the presidency of NAACP, and I called the current president and told him and a couple other people that I was going to do a, a march, like just hold a gathering basically downtown. And about 300 people or so, maybe more, showed up and all the Black Student Union, the students helped make signs. So we actually had like these signs with faces. Um, I downloaded like pictures and then there was just kind of like some basic information about each person um, of individuals who had been shot and killed by police around the country. And anyway, we, we marched and that for a lot of people was, you know, made a lot of people very uncomfortable in Spokane and it also set the tone for what would be seen as, by a lot of people here, a conflict of interest. <laughs> because I was, the, I actually got appointed unanimously as chair of the Police Accountability Commission. So I was at the top level of each of those organizations. And especially the chief of police thought that that was just completely unacceptable, that the president of the NAACP would have also power over police accountability because that was a conflict of interest. So every time we met for our monthly meetings, he would 
drag me about that. Like, oh, so which hat are you wearing today? <laughs> he always liked to, to chide me about how anti-police I was and how biased I was towards the black community and against the police officers. Which I actually talked to one of the police officers, one of the black police officers, um, during that that whole time that I was in that position. I did ride along um, with the police a lot of times late at night because that was the only time I could. That was the only shift that I had available it was my sleeping hours. Um, so I did a lot of ride-alongs just to kind of see what they were up to and how they were conducting police business. They refused to let me wear any kind of protection, like a vest or have a gun or anything like that. So, and we were in some kind of dicey situations because whatever they, wherever they went, I went during the night shift. So. Yeah, that was interesting. But anyway, one of the black officers just kind of said, you do realize that you are the most hated woman in Spokane by the police. And I said, that's okay, you know? Like, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people were nervous because I was so outspoken. I mean, they were nervous for me because they felt like I was doing too much too fast and there was gonna be some kind of major pushback. And I kind of felt like, you know, somebody needs to do something significant because this is an emergency situation for our sons when it comes to police brutality and daughters and, you know, brothers and fathers and uncles and aunts and sisters and everybody else. But like, in particular, to me, it was a feeling of, as a mother of black sons, that was my kind of call to action, and it was personal. And it's interesting, the Netflix documentary, when one of the NAACP members who had barely joined and wasn't active in any capacity, but who saw fit to drag me when it was, you know, convenient. She accused me of using my sons as, you know, some kind of a way to be blacker or something, which I was just like, come on, says the woman who has no kids. <laughs> you know, she has no kids. So it's like, that's funny, Latoya, because honestly, you have no kids and if you did, you might realize that their issues are your issues. And there's no separation between mother and child when it comes to, you know, like what affects your kids affects you. They're your heart, they're your soul, they're your entire, you know, investment and career basically is your kids. Like that's number one. So yeah, the Black Lives Matter movement was personal to me and no, it wasn't some weird way to leverage my, you know, concept of blackness or whatever. Like, it wasn't even about me in terms of my, my advocacy. Like, I never really put my identity or my personal story or whatever out there as something to, for people to obsess on. That was, that was other people that did that, so... You know, in the worst way, but like I feel like you should just be humble as a leader and focus on the issues and it's not really all about you. And that's also why I really built a solid base of leadership. Like I really do believe that good leaders um, empower other leadership so that if anything happens to you, whether health-wise or just, you know, anything in general, the movement will continue without you. Like, it's not really about you. It's about the work. So, but unfortunately, because of the huge 
catastrophe that was the whole press story. I, um, you know, a lot of people that supported me and were inspired by my leadership actually left the NAACP locally. And a lot of the haters basically, you know, took over to the extent that within months of me not being the president, they had like Blue Lives Matter meetings, like more cops joining the NAACP and all this kind of stuff. Like an ex-cop became the president. It was just weird, you know, only in Spokane, right? So I never went back because I did not feel welcome and I did not, I do not believe in being in spaces where I'm not welcome. So, so my nails are done. Those are nice. And I usually like to just put a little bit of oil on my hands and massage that into my cuticles. And then wait like 10 or 15 minutes before I'm going to actually wash my hands. Because you don't want to get water up under that nail glue. Like you really want, um, you can kind of use that oil for your arms too. So, yeah, they look nice, right? Um, I'm a little sparkle. Yes, Nala. Yes, Nala. Nala has to always be in the video. Nala. What are you doing? What are you doing? So, yeah, my self-care time is now up. And I've got more stuff to do. So it's been nice chatting. <laughs> um, back to work. So now that my nails are done, I get a notification that I have a cameo job. I try and get these done as quickly as I can. I just got a cameo booking, so I am going to do that. I usually come outside to do that just because it's like the lighting out here is nice. And um, yeah, so I'm going to do a little cameo for somebody's birthday. So if you don't know what a cameo is, it's basically just a shout out, um, a paid shout out. So... You can go to cameo.com and you can book me and I will do a paid shout out for you if you ever want to give that to somebody as a gift. So now it's time for lunch and I made a salad with just some lettuce and cheese and tomatoes and lots of Italian dressing. <laughs> and I've got homework to do. So the homework is actually for a parenting class that I'm taking for parents with kids with autism and there's so much paperwork. I've got to read a ton of material, um, do little homework exercises, write down a bunch of information, um, strategize and plan training for Langston for all of his um, skills and development that he needs to learn. And then I just kind of like took a moment when I was done with lunch to appreciate the way that these tulips were actually coordinating with these two pieces of art. I really like how those colors were coming together. Then Franklin came home and he took another shower, so he needs his hair done because he's going to be going out to do some um, prep work for his SAT test coming up. And this is how I blow out his hair. So I'm just pulling the curls out a little bit and then I use a pick and some spritz to get it nice and full and um, has lots of volume and yeah so this is his lunch. Who else has kids that like if you're home they expect you to actually plate up their food for lunch. <laughs> Anyways. Um. So yeah, that's Franklin's lunch, and I am now ready to go get Langston again. So this is the CD that I'm listening to on the way to get Langston. Isaiah actually bought it for me. And I'm also appreciating my nails being done and drinking a Coke Zero. Don't judge me for that. So this is Langston's little report. He gets a little report about his day. And I'm also just reviewing some notes for the interview tomorrow. 
And we're driving home. This is the beautiful sky. It's blue sky and clouds in Spokane today. Home. It's time to go outside. Okay. Let's take your shoes off. If you're going to get in the pool, we have to take your shoes off. Give it to Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Thanks. Then give me your sock. Give me your sock. Time to take your socks off. Okay. Look at your pool. Mommy cleaned your pool out. Woo! Let's go get the hose. Get in his pool wall. Yay! Blake's in. Blake's in. Zoop. You want to get in the pool? Mommy, get in the pool wall. Mommy, get in the pool. Can mommy get in the pool wall? Can Langston get in the pool wall? Can your mama get in the pool? Okay. Pushing, smashing. So this is just one of his very favorite things is playing in the pool. And he also loves to look at his tape measure and see if he can tie it in a knot. So this is also just a way that I refresh his curls with a little bit of the Shea Moisture Coconut Hibiscus Spray and um, a little paddle brush. Moving. So after he's at school and they do a lot of playing and stuff and so it gets kind of dried out and um, unkempt looking. So I have to refreshen it. And this is him eating his lunch, which he likes to have a hot pocket for lunch. So it's time for me to do dishes and also get him um, a peanut butter rice crispy treat. Hot pocket. That's gonna be his Except for dessert. the pepperoni. Good job, Langston. Would you like to clean your fingers? Hey, there's a nice rice crispy treat. Are you gonna pick out the marshmallows? Ooh, look at that marshmallow. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Yummy, huh? So I actually found this little sprinkler hose thing at Target as well. It's like $11. And it's another way to kind of jazz up his pool. Look at that. Look at his sprinkle. Did you... Is that fun? Ooh, it's fun. Mommy's gonna get some. So yeah, I'm gonna get a little sun on my legs and then I am going inside to work out on the elliptical a little bit. I got these cute shoes for $8 on clearance. So um, I got in 6,000 steps and I'm well on my way towards my 10,000 for the day. I'll have to get some more a little bit later. And then it's time for his nap and he lays on my arm. So yeah, pretty much. I can't get up until he's done napping <laughs> and he's super OCD about his naps. So there's no really great way to get around this. I either have to nap with him or um, catch up on emails and stuff on my phone. Now it's time to check the mail and see what we got in the mail. So got a couple packages and some letters so we'll see what this is so I got a package from the Shea Butter Network and just some super awesome products in in this package so that's some hemp seed oil and this is a body butter there actually are three different body butters in here <coughs> excuse me um, yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> I actually ordered that one and they sent some free samples. It's a black owned business and I always love to support people who reach out to me and 
offer me samples. I try and at least make a purchase just to support because everybody who has a small business understands how hard it is to make ends meet. So this is just me trying on some of that body butter. It's super smooth and amazing and it smells really good. And then I had to put some on my legs because I'm like, okay, I just need to use some more of that. So yeah, now I'm going to get ready to open up the rest of my mail. So this package, I, so somebody reached out and wanted to send me some shoes and so these are some shoes that look super cute. And I haven't purchased heels in, I feel like it's been years. I literally have almost no heels. I have like a couple pairs, but I just really hardly ever shop. So it's very sweet when somebody wants to send something. It's much appreciated. And I realized I had a little bit of that shea butter, body butter stuff under my fingernails, so I had to get that off before I um, put these shoes on because they're actually kind of a satin fabric, so I didn't want to get any oils on the actual shoes. So these are perfect fit, yay. I wear a size 8, just saying, in case anybody has, like, extra shoes they want to promo. <laughs> so... Yeah, those should match pretty much everything because they're champagne color is what they were called. So, yeah, I can't wait to wear them. Who else walks around in your shoes, like, with just one shoe on like that? That's just probably weird, but that's just kind of like what I do when I try on shoes. Um, so they were sent from or purchased through the shoe mall. And that Shea Butter body butter stuff is amazing. Even though I've been napping with links and so I had like lines embedded in my leg from the um blankets and stuff like it still made my legs look shiny so now it's time to go on my website and update some products and stuff I'm actually loading a new little canvas painting today and just you know checking out the orders and different things. So I'm actually filming with my left hand and typing with my right hand, which kind of gets a little bit annoying because I'm a super fast typer with both hands, but one-handed, not so much. <laughs> so I've got to load those pictures. And this is my nemesis. I mean, the loading. Come on, my computer is so slow. So I probably have some kind of updates or something I need to do because... It takes forever for things to load, and I'm just not a person who has a ton of patience for technology. So now it's time to cook a little dinner, and it's one of those days when it's like clean out the fridge and anything that's, you know, that needs to be used. Oh, yeah, Nala has to make another appearance here. <laughs> Franklin's eating a root beer float, and Langston just woke up from his nap. But, yeah, I basically was just making a... I have one sausage, so I was making kind of like some roasted potatoes, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, carrots, all the stuff that was needing to be used up. So I put a lot of seasoning on it, a little bit of butter, some hot sauce, um, paprika, salt, pepper, some rosemary from out on the deck. And there's Langston just, you know, back outside after his nap. <laughs> he has to get right back out in the water. Sit on the deck, think about life. Such a cute little guy. I only had like the one sausage, so I put that in Franklin's plate and I just ate some of the potatoes and vegetables. Langston's in the back seat, and this is it's almost the end of the day. This is our evening drive for his little small french fry and a small cup of ice on evenings that I have free. That's his favorite thing to do. Huh, Langs? Yeah, and he heard me say, the small french fry. So we're gonna get his little evening snack on. And I also stopped by and got some art supplies. I, I needed a new, like, tiny brush to sign with. 
and I'm going to do some charcoal drawings. So I got some charcoal, and I have a client who wanted some rainbow um, wrap around their dreads, so I'm going to do kind of like a custom rainbow thing um, around their dreads. So yeah, so here we are trying to get his little order on. Hello, how am I help you today? Yeah, can I get a small french fry and a small cup of ice? Yeah. As well as a small Diet Coke? Anything else? Nope, that's everything. Alright, until that. Thank you. Thanks. I noticed that I changed my shirt because, um, <laughs> yeah, the Netflix shirt got kind of sweaty because I worked out on the elliptical again and cooked and yeah so it was just kind of sweaty and kind of done <laughs> so this is my uh, bison shirt from howard well not from howard but about howard anyways <laughs> so i gotta represent my alma mater because once a bison always a bison and by the way i found these little jewels at target these little cut usually I get my hair clasps just from a hair store but they had them um, at Target which was kind of cool so yeah got a couple over here too so headed to the end of the day I'm feeling kind of tired but it's it's fine because the day is almost done I've still got a lot of work to do tonight mostly just prepping for an interview tomorrow and I might do um, my last or my second lecture for the race and culture studies course because I actually prepped for that today too I got all the PowerPoint information um, screenshot <laughs> I can't really figure out how to do um, a video of a PowerPoint because I don't know I'm, I'm old I guess you know it's just not my generation so um, I have to save my PowerPoints as PDFs, then email the PDF to myself, then when I get the email on my phone, screenshot the slides, then crop them, then load them into my video. So if anybody knows an easier way to do it that doesn't require purchasing any software and also doesn't require me doing the filming on my laptop, because that's not convenient at all then yeah just let me know because that would make it easier <laughs> I need to figure out how to upload I, I have like so I basically just have all PowerPoints and just Microsoft Office is what I used when I used to teach and I and of course I could upload to Blackboard or Angel or Canvas or all these different systems but you like upload the file so when I'm making a video in iMovie you have to like select pictures or videos you can't really from what I've been able to tell anyway put a file in there but I'll, I'll keep trying to figure it out <laughs> it's all about streamlining right to get the most done in a day so yep that's what we're up to <laughs> about 8 30 p.m. here which is of course 11 30 on the east coast because east coast is way ahead of us over here on the west coast but yeah sun is going down here and um, sometimes just the most random things happen to me like I'll just get hit up by somebody at a production company or somebody who randomly wants to come from a really far distance to get their hair done or I don't know just like different things every day so there's no there's no like day that's the same as the next day 
no matter how much I plan, there's always like something that's a little bit different that goes on. So yeah, it's interesting, an interesting life. And doing this video has honestly kind of made me appreciate my life more because I didn't actually really know I guess I never like stop to think about everything that goes into every day because I always am just stressed and pressuring myself to get as much done as possible and just keep like pushing 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 because there are so many bills and I just never know like when I'm gonna have income or how much income and so it's kind of just like I'm almost always just panicked about finances because we don't have any savings and it's just like a lot coming up with Franklin's senior year and um, you know like Isaiah's leaving the country for his grad school program and it's just you know there are expenses in every direction and um, I really want to give my kids the best life that I possibly can, but I feel like we're just always like pinched, you know, just always at that like cliff. Every single month is that cliff of barely enough money to pay all the bills and get to the next month. And then, you know, the next month comes and it's like, oh my God, I don't think we're going to have enough money. And then somehow it works out barely and then we get to the next month and then it's just you know and I'm just so tired of living on that edge I know that I'm sure everybody's been there and for some of you it's been a lifelong struggle like for me like I've never had um, money to the point where I felt like I didn't have to keep just pushing and working and stressing um, if any kind of extra comes in, then I've got like this laundry list of things that I need to catch up on that I've put off just paying, you know, just like tending to the emergency bills and the absolute must pay, um, to keep living or not lose our rental or, um, not lose the car or whatever. So... It's always that, um, like, the demand of just the urgent stuff, and then there's kind of like a second tier list of things, like, if there's, if there's ever any extra, there's just always that second tier <clears throat> that's waiting and just, like, ready to be paid, <laughs> so, um, yeah. So anyway, that's just kind of life, and I know it's the same for a lot of people, so I don't feel like I should complain or I have any special um, challenge to whine about. It's just sometimes it gets tiring to always be at that edge, though. Like, it, I really, my goal financially is just to have enough to spare and enough to share because I'm a giver and I love to give and it it hurts my heart when I can't give you know when I can't even give my kids what I wish I could give them let alone help others and you know like there are a few things that I do for myself just to kind of maintain my own health and well-being but I'm not selfish with my money like I'm not a shopper I don't just go out and spoil myself ever because <laughs> I would have major mom guilt over that because there are way more things that my kids want than I even want I just don't even think about it usually like I don't really think about what I want because I just know it's not really an option so it makes me happier to just um live that way just kind of you know to give to others if I have any extra so, anyway, I'm going to turn the camera around, though, because there's a super pretty sunset right now. I don't know if you can even really see it, but <laughs> this is Spokane. This is the sunset on High Drive. It's 
called High Drive up here. This is just kind of like where I like to drive um, in the evening with Langston because he loves to go for long drives. We just, we don't really go for long, long, but just, you know, drive around, around the neighborhood and see some sights, see some people, see some scenery, watch the sun go down. So yeah, back to the, <laughs> the video. I just, it just has made me kind of grateful today to think about the fact that I just have so much to um, be thankful for. I mean, just it's made me grateful to think about the amount of time that I do get to spend with my kids and just all of the things that I am able to to do even when things fall through. Like today, my hair client canceled and the person who was going to come over and look at art canceled. So I had a more low-key day than I usually have as far as schedule goes, but it also gives me some time to just um, meditate on life and think about the fact that there are all, always trade-offs. So like if I had a nine to five job and I had that dependable paycheck that I feel like would be so amazing so I didn't have to stress over where money is going to come from every week and every month, um, then the trade-off would be that I don't get to spend as much time with Langston and he really does need that consistency and that stability of routine and a caregiver who really understands him and who's committed to his program for development and learning with his um, autism. So, you know, getting him caught up for kindergarten so yeah, I'm just kind of, I'm glad that I get to spend time with him, and yeah, I'm just, I still, I still get stressed over bills and where is the money going to come from every month, but at the end of the day, everybody's healthy and happy and taken care of, <laughs> and, um, he gets his little, he's a cheap date, you know, because he gets, that's all he wants is a small french fry and a small cup of ice. So he likes to chew the ice and he likes to eat the french fries, of course. So it's easy. It's not too messy. It's easy to vacuum up if he spills anything. Um, and it's like a dollar sixty-three or whatever for his order. And then I just like to treat myself to a Diet Coke because I feel like that's, that's, <laughs> it's, pro it's still bad. It's not healthy at all, but I only drink like half of it. I don't know. That's my compromise because it still, it still feels like I'm drinking a soda, but I'm not putting all that sugar into my body. And then I'm only putting like half of the Diet Coke. Um, sugar substitute chemicals in my body. So, I don't know. I'm sure that everybody will have plenty to say to criticize my my lifestyle and just kind of my day and the way I do things, which is fine. Everybody, I feel like at the end of the day, like you have your way of doing things and everybody else has their way of doing things and ultimately just do what works for you and you have a different set of circumstances you have a different body you have a different mind you have a different spirit than the next person so like who am i to say this is how somebody else should do things um and who is anybody else to say how i should do things i mean there's something to be said for cool ideas and sharing information but I just don't believe in being judgmental because it's like you don't know somebody else's somebody else's situation and they don't know your situation fully so do what works for you and be happy. <laughs> so my last task is to edit this video 
and then I will be done for the day. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Are you gonna get in the pool with your pajamas on? Oh my goodness. He says I am. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. He's going for it. So I guess he wants to still be out in his pool. Thanks, Dan. Speaking of ways to end the day, this is how I always end my day with a nice hot bath. So let me know what the most relatable moments were in my day when it comes to your life and your lifestyle. So I hope you enjoy my little day in the life of, and I will be back with my regular videos soon.